it's a credible claim uh, in the sense that uh, Islamic State rarely claims a tax that it doesn't actually carry out. Uh, and I would also argue that um, going back quite a uh, number of years, Islamic State has had Russia uh, in its crosshairs. Uh, Russia's support for Iran, its support for Assad in Syria, the Russian campaign, military campaign against Islamic State fighters in Syria, the fact that you have had the Wagner Group, of course, the, the Russian mercenary force operating in parts of Africa where it has also targeted Islamic State um, fighters, and also more relatively recently, um, Russia's perceived support for the Taliban in Afghanistan, which is a bitter rival of Islamic State. All of this, I think, makes for a compelling argument for why Islamic State would, would indeed want to, uh, to go after um, uh, Russian targets. Let's remember that it was only some weeks back that um, uh, Islamic State Khorasan was complicit in a major attack in Iran. Uh, ISK has also been complicit in uh, a number of other attacks, uh, quite a few of them were foiled, in Europe as well as the Middle East, a series of, of attacks we're talking about here. So my view is that all, all fingers should point to Islamic State. There's really no other logical um, actor, I think, that could be, um, the, again, could have both the will and the capacity to do something like this. I think that uh, the Islamic State has identified um, gaps in Russia's security apparatus, which has stretched thin with uh, its campaigns in Africa, uh, the intense war of attrition, uh, full-blown conventional war in Ukraine, uh, and essentially uh, the degradation of Russia's uh, counterterrorism uh, capabilities. These are forces that uh, would normally be allocated to uh, deal with domestic security issues, uh, counterterrorism, uh, in the in supporting law enforcement. Well, in, inevitably, uh, you know, the buck should stop there at, at Putin's desk, uh, particularly when the, the warnings were made by the United States privately and publicly uh, on March 7th, uh, pointing very specifically to an attack on a public venue of this kind. Uh, so this can only be described as a, as a failure for Putin, all the more so when his initial reaction to the March 7th warning was to accuse the U.S. of blackmail and claiming this was a uh, you know, fabrication. Uh, Russians may no longer have the opportunity to ask why this could have happened in in a public way, but you know they'll be asking themselves around the kitchen table, uh, how can our great president have uh, allowed this to happen? <laughs>